Hey everybody. Well, I am on a uh, Aspen bedding area cleanup mission today. So if you go back to my videos last year, I uh, I did I think three or four videos on probably four videos because I did four different cuts on this property, um, just clear cutting Aspen and cutting trails through it, and. I'm calling this a 10 out of 10 bedding area. I'm at the first one. I'll show I'll show them all off eventually, but it is phenomenal what this regen did in one year. So it is June. Oh, what date is it today? June 10th today, and I cut these I think in May last year, but I cannot believe the regen. I mean, it is pushing. 12 feet tall so I'm gonna take you through here this is the one I was a little worried about because I had some higher up Aspen that I wanted to clean out because I knew they would settle over the summer but I found a lot of deer beds in here and the contrast to what the rest of the property look is looks like is amazing I mean this is a predominantly Aspen property so landowner just wanted to get some more bedding in here and that's what we did with these aspen clear cuts so i'll show them off now. all right look at that so that is one year's worth of regrowth now i'm holding this right at my head level look at how tall that stuff is i mean some of this is pushing 12 feet tall so i did have to come back in to clean up these trails a little bit just because of settling i didn't quite i left too many trees kind of hung up higher last year so there was there was some settling but there was still a ton of deer beds in here I was very very pleasantly surprised when I came came through here so this bedding is set up on the edge of a tag alder swamp and you can see the the aspen stand over there the food is out that direction we're putting bedding right here because we want to try to stack the does closer to the food so then the bucks can hang back in the swamp and uh, don't have to bed as far back behind the does because bucks don't tend to bed with does, they will. But um, a lot of times the does will stack up right next to the food, as close to the food as they can, you know, as close as the cover allows. And then the bucks will bed back behind them. Well here, when we create bedding where there wasn't bedding before, now the does don't have to bed up on in the swamp and then the bucks way back behind them. They can bed up here and then the bucks will hopefully bed in the swamp and bed on his property because most of his bedding has been in that swamp or on the neighbors. Therefore the bucks likely were on the neighbors property. So now we put the does here and we hopefully put the bucks on his property too. So there's a spot that I had to clean up because it just it all settled. I and mean, this is Doing this is three times the work of making a hinge cut bedding area. It is very, very labor intensive, but I would take this type of bedding over a hinge cut area any day. So now we're really getting into the thick aspen region. Look at that stuff. And it is beautiful. And here's where I started to find the beds. Look at that beautiful bed right there. So there was a bed there. There's a bed back right in there. So they are bedding under some of these tops that kind of settled and made these little canopies I mean look at it it's just a jungle that's crazy that's one year so the deer they can cut through here I cut trails through here last year and I'm leaving this natural I'm doing one big sweeping trail through this as kind of a main travel hub but I'm leaving a lot of this natural where I know there's not a lot of trash. They can navigate through that and they can bed up in there. That's what we want because when the leaves fall off and the rut's ramping up, where do you think the does are going to push into? They're going to push into this type of stuff as the pressure's ramping up around them and the bucks are chasing them. They're going to want to be in that thick cover during rifle hunting when uh, the rifle hunting pressure's starting to kick kick up around this property the bucks are going to be pushing in here this is phenomenal phenomenal food i mean thousands of pounds per acre of food here look at this stuff so in the winter they're going to be in here browsing on all of this here i just took my snips and cut a trail through here i think i am going to come back through just with some roundup 
and just kind of spray it just a narrow trail I'm not gonna bust this wide open I want to keep this as natural looking as possible but I'd like to not have to or have the landlord have to come back and clear this again next year um, which I mean even with roundup it's gonna get a little bit of regen but if I can get it started get the deer traffic started through here um, hopefully the deer will kind of keep it beat down but I know they, they like those bare dirt trails, so that's part of the reason I'm going to do that. So there was beds up in here. There was a bed right here underneath this, this nice canopy. Now I cut a big swooping trail going back through there. I'm not going to go down that in the interest of time. But I found a bunch of beds up in here. There's a nice big deer bed right there. There's a little bed right there, so probably a doe and a fawn. There's another bed. You probably can't see. Kind of have to go under right up in there. Deer bed. And then a couple fawns. I saw a lot of bedding kind of on that transition from the swamp to the cut. Found a few beds as I was cutting up through there. But, I mean, this is just, just awesome looking stuff. They like this tall grass, too. I mean, I saw bedding, there's a few beds up back in there, but that regen is really what we're looking for. All right, I got two more cuts to get at today, so I might add them to this video, I might make them separate, we'll see what happens. All right, so this was the first cut we did on this property, me and the landowner. Well, this isn't, I'm looking into the canopied woods but I want to show you the contrast so this is what it used to look like that's what it looks like now so deer desert no deers bedding in that in the summer they might a little bit but when leaf drop hits they're not bedding in that but check that out it is thick and this thing is pack full of deer beds I found I don't even know how many deer beds but it is loaded with deer beds so we cut this one first last year and I don't remember April into May I think I worked on it in April and May I hinged a few trees so if you have an area like this but you got let's say a few isolated elm aspen basswood box elder trees like that if you hinge them, they're going to make a nice little bedding island in the midst of all this thick cover. So I hinged, there's an ash and an elm, I think two, two ash and one elm. And there are, oh here's the deer bed, I'm standing right on it. So there's a deer bed right here. There is a deer bed, oh you can't really see, it's like right, right up in there. I saw three of them in here. Where's the other one? Well, maybe it was just two. There might, I think there's one more right up underneath the tree over there. But we hinged like six trees in this area. But every one that is hinged, I see bedding underneath it. But they're definitely bedding in this thick stuff too. So with aspen, you got to clear cut them. You can't hinge them. I said that before. You got to cut trails through it. It is three, four times the work of doing a hinge cut bedding area. But my gosh, do the deer love it. And right now, I mean, this thing is packed full of beds. But it will only get better. When leaf drop hits and there's nothing for cover out there, this is where the deer are going to be bedding. For sure. I mean, look at it. I'm keeping this camera at eye level. This is one good summer's worth of growth. And the deer have loved it. Found a lot of browse through here. Tons of deer beds, a lot of fawn beds, a lot of big beds that could be bucks, could be bachelor groups, who knows. But it just looks great. And on the main trail, they're kind of keep, they're keeping the main areas browsed. So they're staying a little lower. But when you get off it, man, is their cover. And they can find all kinds of little bedding nooks up in this stuff. And with if you have the ability to log, obviously logging is a great option for aspen. Here's a bed. There's another bed back there. 
So if you have that, then you get some money in your pocket too. This particular situation wasn't an option, but you can't go wrong with this. You can transform your land, it's possible. Most guys get so fixated on food plots, they leave a woods just wide open. It's a deer desert. Rely on bedding on neighbors and shrubby cover and things like that, whereas change is possible. So don't get so fixated on one aspect of managing for deer, but uh, make yourself open to other possibilities. And this is food and cover. In the winter, they're going to be in here heavy browsing. When the conditions get the toughest, this is really when this is going to get pounded. But you can see, I mean, there's heavy browsing here already. So here is a little canopied bed I made. I dropped some aspen to kind of push these shrubs down. And you can see the well-made, maintained bed right there. So any place I kind of had a ability to make a living canopy, the deer were in it. All right, one more spot. This video will get a little bit long, but there's just so much to show off here that I don't want to miss anything. So here's a trail I cut through here. That's what I did. I just came through and looked for any areas where it settled a little bit or a branch fell cleaned them up but I pretty much left most of the aspen growing in this one but kept it real natural looking so there was a, there's deer beds there's one here there's one up there there was one right here a deer bed here deer bed here look at that big bed this could be a bachelor group they're all pretty good sized beds there's three three really good sized beds oh there's a smaller one maybe not but just packed full of deer beds. So if you can do this, best time to do it is dormant season before leaf out. I cut these a little after dormant season. They were just starting to bud break last year, but can't complain about the results because it's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna throw one more quick one on, on this video. I walk back to the four wheeler. So I'll be right back. All right, so here's the third cut, last one for this video. I'm not gonna walk it. I'm absolutely beat. It's supposed to be, I mean, it's probably already there, 95 with high humidity today. And I got some spraying yet to do, so I don't wanna waste energy walking around here. So I'm just gonna quick explain what I saw in this one. Again, great regen. So this one is between the cut I did at the beginning and the cut I just showed. Um, I forgot to mention in the cut I just showed off, the reason we cut that one is because it's the end of a point where it kind of meets a marshy swamp or a grassy swamp with the tag elder and then a grassy swamp. And we cut it because we knew that had the most buck bedding potential of any of these cuts. And the landowner here actually shot a buck early season off the food plot, had a sweet drop time, just a awesome buck and that cut is probably at least i'm rough guessing 300 yards off of the food plot and that buck could have went any direction and he went right for that furthest cut and he died literally right on the edge of it so i mean that buck, that cut i didn't show them all in the video but i know there's 20 to 30 beds at least that i saw and um, I know more because I couldn't there's no way I could have walked through every square inch of it So loaded with beds. I actually jumped deer. That was the first one I didn't these two I drove the four were up to that when I walked over to So I jumped deer out of that one. I could have jumped deer out of these two too, but I was driving the four-wheeler So couldn't hear them. but anyway in this particular cut It's kind of between the two. I'm thinking doe bedding again potential for buck bedding though It's a, it's a ways off the food plot and there are some kind of little shrubby pockets that I noticed some beds on the drive back here but I saw lots of fawn beds in this one um with with doe beds adjacent I mean here's a here's a good bed right there this one stays shorter out here but it's getting browsed 
very heavily. So it's kind of a browse cut in a way if you can see that. But it gets thicker as you get along the, the marshy edge. So it's possible to do this stuff. It's not hard, it's just hard work. It's not hard to envision how to do it. It's just a lot of work to actually go through and do it. I mean, I've spent hours cutting on these three cuts and cleaning up and doing all that good stuff. But, I mean, it's gonna it's paying off. It already is paying off. This year it's going to be even better than last year. I mean, this is exactly what they want during those best times to be in the deer stand. This is exactly what they want over winter. They're still in here in the summer, though they're going to bed back in the shade to stay cool more in the summer but of course I'm still seeing beds in here but it'll just get better so if you want to change your property don't be afraid to roll up your sleeves and get at it and of course if you got loggable aspen that's a great route to go too because you get paid for that so all right you all take care god bless